Hello, Alpha family. I'm so excited to be here with you today on the heels of launching Alpha Female with a star in the film industry, um, the our very own uh, Gemstone Studios um, Executive Vi Vice President, Marie Jacobson. Marie, welcome. Hi, Michaela. Thank you so much for having me. Apologies for the delay. Oh, no problem. We Technical difficulties are a given yeah. in this space, so glad we, we made it. i um, glad we can see you, and thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited about having this with you um, right oh. now. So excited to be here. I'm so grateful for your partnership and just loving the, you know, the alliance that we have across the working divisions at Sony. It's great. Yes, yes, it's wonderful. And congratulations on launching the Rising Storyteller Search. Thank we're you. So excited about that and excited to partner with you uh, for it. So uh, we're going to talk about it uh, some more. But before we do that, I I want to dive into a little bit into your history and sort of what brought you to to become to head up Gemstone Studios, and and the kinds of uh, work that you have done to to get here. Oh great! I mean, I mean, I'm as in, I could talk about myself all day. So I'm going to keep <laughs> short as possible to um, keep your audience awake and excited to be here. But um, I actually, funny enough, I would qualify very much as a Sony lifer. I uh, graduated from UCLA um, in 1991 um, or in the 1900s, as my kids like to call it, um, <laughs> which is they're horrified. Um, I can't believe that I made it through college without Starbucks or the internet, which frankly, <laughs> I can't either, but I did. And um, funny enough, my very first job, um, and don't judge me, was with Sony. <laughs> I started. That's a good um, thing. <laughs> it's it's horrifying, actually. But I will say this: my I'm my father's daughter, and he said, "You get a job at a multinational company, you work hard, and they'll notice, and they'll promote you, and you'll stay there forever." And you know, true to his words, here we are. Um, <laughs> But I started in research as an analyst. I, I actually applied to be a Directors Guild trainee, a DGA trainee, and a research analyst on the same day uh, at my uh, at my career center back before the internet. Uh, and, you know, it's like sliding doors, right? You never know. So um, Sony actually called me for an interview. It's kind of a long story because I actually interned at Paramount first, and Paramount helped me up. But um, which is kind of the theme, right, for all of this is about extending a hand and helping people up and giving people opportunities, opening doors. That's what it's all about. Um, started in research, then moved over to sale again at Sony, uh, went for a job, an account executive job. I did not get it. Devastated. I <laughs> really work in syndication sales. It was a sexy, sexy part of the business then and still is. Um, didn't get it. And I, I guess that's another theme I would give is the sort of fear of failure and also the fuel of failure. And what happens when you don't get something, you know, that you really think you want and or do want. And so anyway, then I ended up jumping over to Comedy Central. I moved to New York and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, I, I got to sort of experience from the ground floor, the boom of cable, very similar to you young ones who are listening, the boom of streaming. And I got to do things that, frankly, I'm not sure I would have been able to had I stayed in a more, you know, traditional, institutionalized sort of um, uh, arena. And so we built we built Comedy Central together. I was manager of program planning and scheduling. I thought it was the sexiest job one could ever have. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing schedules, figuring out when Benny Hill was going to play. And then all of a sudden I got involved in acquisitions. We brought in absolutely fabulous and then I started getting involved in um, special projects and originals and Doug Herzog started and South Park landed with us and The Daily Show landed with us. And uh, it was it was really cool. It was a really fun, amazing place to collaborate, make great friends and make something just funny. It was just so fun to work and funny. And um and then I left there because I got an opportunity to move to Australia, which makes no sense whatsoever because I would have happily lived and died, almost did a few times in New York City. <laughs> uh, but I took a leap and I went to go uh, get a job in Sydney, Australia. 
And uh, a job was to run programming at a studio owned cable network, which was something I probably would have had to wait a long time to do had I stayed in New York. And uh, there was a cable channel there called TV One, different than the TV One here in the US, owned by Sony Paramount and Universal. Went down there to head programming and then got an amazing opportunity to run the network. And ran the network with probably some of the most amazing people. I had 100% staff turnover. Um, between being programming and head. So I got to build my whole team and that team was amazing. So it was the first time, it was kind of a trial by fire MBA, um, reported into a board of presidents here at the studios. And then we put all, then we launched um, Sci-Fi Channel. So uh, we put all of the groundwork together to launch an incredible, probably the best Sci-Fi Channel in the world. And then came back here in 2000 and started uh, running programming at our international networks. Um, where I worked for Andy Kaplan, who taught me everything I know. Uh, worked for him for 18 years. It was incredible. We started back at Sony building cable networks around the world. And what started as a small sort of cottage business um, grew into probably one of the more profitable businesses at the studio. Uh, we ran programming, which was, again, fueled by acquisitions, studio acquisitions, third-party acquisitions. But then we started to unravel the like the mystery, the mystique of original programming. And so we started to produce over a thousand hours a year of original content that was scripted and unscripted. Um, just had the joy of learning from so many incredible creators, um, so many incredible Sony employees all over the world, Latin America, across Europe, very big in Asia, spent a lot of time in India, um, really, Every day I learned something. I mean, I, you have to be incredibly curious. You have to be interested in other cultures. I was so blown away by where people were and what they were, how they brought their lives and their culture into their programming. And you learn pretty quickly that uh, you might be from the States, but uh, you have a lot more to learn out there than they have to learn from you. I will tell you that. So it was, it was amazing. So I worked in uh, as a as a buyer, essentially, and a, and a producer for our networks group for a long time, for almost 17, 18 years. And it was just explosive across linear and digital and mobile and um, really fantastic. And then about 18 months ago, maybe a little about 18 months ago, um, I had the opportunity to come to the studio side and come and work on the studio side as a seller, as a producer. And really kind of like lift and shift what we were doing in our sort of global networks group, non-traditional, you know, packaging of like really exciting IP, um, but do it in a way that's a little to the side, a little adjacent to the traditional studio system and um, sort of partner emerging voices with best in class, you know, producers, directors from all over the world. Um, that's what we were trying to basically replicate 18 months ago. So here we are. And we gave birth to Gemstone Studios. Um, the name kind of came from, um, well, lots of different names. Matter of fact, we loved Condo. We loved <laughs> the spirit of Condo. And uh, we pitched hard to call it Condo Studios. But you, um, you know what? Sony is like, you know what? Condo is all of Sony. It is not one label of Sony. And they're hundred percent right, even though we just love the spirit of it. And um, so we thought about Screen Gems and we see what Screen Gems does every day in terms of disrupting and, and thinking outside the box and coming out with like really efficient, but really original uh, productions, great creative. So we thought Screen Gems, Screen Gems TV, nah. And then we used the gem, that sort of diamond in the rough. And we thought Gemstone Studios was a great name. And here we are. So okay. I got to team We're fighting every day to get our shows sold and um and rising storytellers is a huge piece of that so that's, that's, a really that's an amazing one. story no not at all i am fascinated um because accomplished people like you always have such amazing stories and i think one um one thing i'm hearing the pattern is uh, seize upon the opportunities that are given to you and and 100%. and just uh take take the challenge um, seek it and, and take it. So that's pretty amazing. Um, and, and I love that story and you have, uh, you have accomplished so much. So tell us a little bit about the, the current productions. I know of one, which is one of my favorite shows of Senisha, and I am not ashamed to admit that I binged it the weekend it came out. Really? 
I do. I love absentia heads. We love you guys. Um, so tell us more about what you're working on right now and, and kind of like what's, what's coming up. Oh, that's great. Well, absentia is, um, the third, this is, we're just, we just wrapped and obviously launched, uh, the third series, uh, third season of absentia, which we were just, that was such a labor of love. Um, we can talk a little bit about that because the humble beginnings of that was, is very much what we're looking to achieve with rising storytellers, finding a new voice and then wrapping that new voice with all the support of the studio and then making something happen. And Stana Caddick is like nothing short of, you know, revelatory. She's the hardest working, most dedicated artist. Uh, I, I mean, we were so lucky. And there's such a mindset that you look for with creators, uh, content creators, you know, performers, you know, multi-hyphenates in this space because there is nothing easy about what we do, right? We produce on an indie budget. We produce with some, uh, you know, new talent. And then here comes Donna, who is such a pro and her patience and her dedication and her creative just uh, just investment in what we made was um, really amazing just for all of us to be a part of. So Absentia um, really broke a lot of ground for us. Um, and what it did is we now have a really exciting slate of new shows that we are out pitching as we speak. Um, part of, part of with rising storytellers and why we're doing this is again, to mine voices, new voices, specific voices, giving, you know, diverse voices, a real chance to like cut through and what can sometimes be seen as a very daunting studio system. Um, even though I'd say studio executives are more open now than ever before to, uh, to new, new stories, new voices, new talent. But, um, so now we're just about to go out with, um, a project, uh, well, actually we have, I guess four, and I don't want to go too, too deep because obviously we have, I know a lot of things to talk about, but, um, we're going out with a project called just a girl, um, which is a project near and dear to us. It's uh, something we're taking out with Norman Lear, who, if anyone knows about pushing at the edges of uh, the movies of society um, and really investing in new talent, new just headspace, new characters, you know, again, look, just sort of upending convention. It's Norman Lear. And wow, has that been thrilling? He and Brent Miller. And, and Michael, they've just been phenomenal um, to work with. And this project was brought to us by Ariel Schrag. She is uh, such a fantastic talent. She is right down like the bullseye of Gemstone. Uh, she comes from the L Word and Dare Me. She wrote an incredible spec um, script uh, called Adam that actually got picked up and made over at Sundance. And she has just penned this beautiful story about growing up. It's a coming of age story of 14 year old girls who go on an adventure. And her pitch to us was really like, why do boys get all the adventures? You know, why do boys, and by the way, love boys, got no problem with boys um, and married one. And I have one, uh, a son, a uh, 16 year old son. But I will say, you know, we've been raised on these stand by me and you know, The Outsiders and Sandlot and we read Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer and, you know, they're out in the wild and they're getting dirty and they're having adventures and why, well, why isn't it a girl's turn? And so it's really about girls who leave New York City in 1995 and they leave the city and they go on the Metro North up into the wilds of uh, upstate New York to go save a boy that they fear is in trouble. Wow. And it's just a beautiful story. It's really, there's tons of pathos. It's super funny. We're, we're shooting it as sort of a, a multi-season, um, uh, pitching it as a multi-season, and we're taking it out in the next two weeks. So we're yeah. really excited. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching that for sure. Yeah. Uh, very, very, very exciting. Um, I want to remind the audience that this is a QA and a and we can take uh, your questions. We're live right now. Um, I saw a couple of questions in the chat. G definitely going to ask Marie. Uh, Marie, okay. let's talk about the rising storyteller surge because it, it it feels like all of the stuff that you've been telling me has been leading you here because you've seen something happening in the industry that you just wanted to change. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I, I was thinking about, you know, you always, I, you know, you don't know if you have anything new per se to say, but I think there just feels like 
such a commitment to new voices now than probably ever before. And I was thinking about it, you know, like when I sort of started in all this in the 1900s, um, the show sort of defined television then, you know, it was sort of these like big ensemble dramas and comedies, like for me, Seinfeld and Friends, like, you know, they were iconic. I mean, broke crazy new ground. Dawson's Creek, Beverly Hills 90210. Like, I was just thinking about that, you know, like, well, those are the shows that I like dined out on in the 90s, you know? And then in the 2000s, 2010, you started to see, you know, obviously the emergence of premium cable. And again, I always sort of say pushing at the edges, Sopranos, you know, oh my God, The Wire, you know? Um, Mad Men, which was, and then Breaking Bad, which is a seminal, amazing, crazy show that just, I mean, may we all be so blessed. I mean, that is, I mean, the shining light of, of our studio, of course. But then I think about now, like where we are now. And again, I can only mention a few of these shows, but like, I just go, okay, you think of Michaela Cole. I don't know if you're watching I May Destroy You. Yes. But my God. Yes. Is just blowing onto the scene. I can't look away from it. I can't look away from her. It's so brave. It's so daring. It's so honest. Um, you know, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I mean, may we, you know, yes. uh, flea bag. Um, that was just so good. And then like uh, Unorthodox. Unorthodox was just one of those shows that again. Oh, so good. Oh my God. I'm directed by a woman, Maria Schrader. Yes. Um, about an old shot on Venice. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. And shot on Venice. Uh, hello, was it really? Yes. <laughs> I never doubted it. It's gorgeous. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I mean, a Venice camera, we love our Venice cameras. We shot Reckoning on uh, our show that's on Netflix now. We shot Reckoning um, on Venice too. Um, so really good. Um, anyway, and and I think of our own Estes Spalding on Becoming a God in Central Florida. And one of our judges, she's one of our judges for Rising Storyteller, also Diane Paragas. She just uh, wrote, directed a movie called Yellow Rose, which is coming out to theaters in the next, uh, we hope soon, next couple of months when theater business is back up and, and firing. Um, and she's, unbelievably, Yellow Rose is the first Filipina American film to be released by a, a, a Hollywood studio in theatrical. It's crazy. So I just feel like right now, there's just, we feel like we're on the edge of just this explosive platform of storytelling. And again, I hate to just reference female uh, storytellers because trust me, there is so much just audacious, bold storytelling from all genders, you know, all representative, you know, creators, but it's pretty exciting. And it is. It really is. And we piece of that, about yeah. this. When, when we discussed uh, our partnership, we were talking about how we have um, basically the same goals is is representing uh, female and minority voices. It doesn't matter who it is. All genders apply. There are, as you were saying earlier, amazing men who represent the female voice quite well in the female really perspective cool. and vice versa. So um, definitely something that we're all trying to do with with the programs. Um, yeah, I feel like there's just more openness, you know, I just feel like there's not a, there's not a certain way you need to look or talk or feel or tell, or it's just like, bring it in. We're just want, we're, we're, we're so hungry and audiences are so hungry. Yes, yeah. that's, that's very true. Um, so let's talk a, a bit about the specifics of the program mm -hmm. or we have some filmmakers here, um, with us, uh, watching this, who I think are very eager to learn more and potentially apply. So that's yeah. very, very exciting. Uh, you have no parameters for, or or better yet, you have no requirements for experience, right? For, mm -hmm. for the search. No, and I love that you're saying that, Michaela. I think the most important thing is we're looking for creators. We're looking for people with big ideas. You know, we have, we're a studio, okay? We do have resources. We really believe in using our infrastructure to support great creators. People who come in with either, you know, and we keep talking about like, what's your story? So much of what we do, what we bring, whether it's to the office, to the set, you know, to the to our edit bays, to, you know, to how we perform, how we write, it comes from our own personal experiences and stories and influences. And we're just looking for someone who has that sort of very fresh perspective, someone who has that passion, um, someone who isn't afraid of throwing it out there and saying, this is like, I was put on this planet to tell this story, you know? And those are the stories we want. 
And so listen, it's not a script writing search person. It's very much about storytellers and how we can work with, I mean, when I think of your massive community of storytellers, visual storytellers, there's nothing that says that you would be any less or more apt to win this than anyone else from any other medium. Because frankly, um, everyone has a story to tell and you just got to be, we just, we got to look for one that's going to cut through. So the mechanics of this are, please, I just can't say it anymore. Please apply. Don't, you know, don't let that fear of, well, I've been thinking about writing this. I would, I got other stuff. I got my day job. I have my kids. I have my, no, it doesn't. Listen, this is a very specific, like you go on to risingstorytellersearch.com. It's a very, you'll see, it's a very simple mechanic in terms of what we're looking for. There's a self tape submission that can be up to six minutes um, with very specific questions. And you can give your sort of, you know, top line pitch. Um, and then what we're going, we're working with our partners, um, Ideas United, who were sort of, they really sparked us into this. They came in and uh, we've done several of these internationally where we look for specific, you know, either directors or, or writers, but being able to do this in a more macro sense at the studio here in, in LA is just really exciting to span this across the country. Um, so Ideas United is going to take all of these submissions we're going to narrow, they're going to narrow it down to probably, I think the top 20, those 20 will, will be given some legal documents to review. Um, I do want to say this because I mean, uh, in, authentically, I say the studio, we revere artists, we revere content creators. We, we want everyone to know going into this, what the expectation is that the winner will, we are going to buy the idea, okay, the the idea of the winner, what we're doing. And with that comes, uh, we're going to, there's $30,000 on the line. And that's technically the WGA upset price for a format, not to get all technical, but we just want everyone to know that while there is the top 20, we'll be given some paperwork to sign. We're all about, we want your ideas to remain your ideas, but when we get down to those finalists, it just becomes, you know, there's some business in this art that we do. Um, so the 20 will come in uh, as ideas and we, there's a whole there's a whole crew of us at Sony that will be scouring these 20 ideas. And then we'll name four finalists. Those four finalists, we're going to pair with mentors who will work specifically in the studio to refine the pitches, shoot a sizzle. They'll work with Ideas United, um, and they'll be given a camera kit from you guys, which is incredible. Um, So we have our four finalists will have prizes from... Uh, well, kits from you. And also we have um, Caltex will be giving a script writing um, and producing software, which is like invaluable with training. And then we have um, Josephina's um, shoes that are also outfitting um, our, our finalists. It's just the best. We have just such a great community of support. And then there's a pitch event in November. And that pitch event will go, uh, the four finalists will pitch to our judges and our judges, I'll be one of the judges because Gemstone obviously would be producing this, going out, packaging it, trying to sell it and make it. Um, and then we have uh, our three uh, judges. So uh, we will have four of us evaluating the incoming um, pitches and sizzle reels. And then the winner will be named in November. Those are probably too much, but that's all on the website. But yes, risingstorytellersearch.com. Um, yeah, and it's storytellers plural, rising search sorry just it was one of those things we debated over and over yes. but yeah make sure you have two s's there storyteller is yeah, exactly. yes um we have a question from dina here in the chat um which mm-hmm. is perfect segue from what you were saying what would be a great impression to see in a portfolio from an un- unknown creative an unknown storyteller what would be a great i'm sorry what was that what what would be what would give you a great impression of an unknown oh. story if if you saw their portfolio? You know, I think I would say when I kind of came down to like what is the story you want to tell and that kind of why not you idea, I think it has to feel like you're not just pitching an idea, but that that you were sort of born to do this. Like this was something that means so much to you that this is a project that you only you can tell. 
um, that there's such an implicit understanding of the world, of the, of the characters that populate that world, that there's some sense of, of really forward trajectory and, and, and that you can almost see the story as it arcs. Um, and we're not ruling out limited series, but we always love to see something that has real longevity in it. Something that like, oh God, these are characters that people will not want to say goodbye to, that people will want to spend time with. Um, so yeah, I think authenticity is hugely important to us. Um, we'd love representation in regards to sort of maybe a look in to worlds we don't, we maybe not using that unorthodox example. Um, but really it's about just a really great simple story that needs to be told. And we can tell that pretty quickly when someone pitches to us. For sure. Um, and related to that, Autumn is asking us in the chat here, as far as a project pitch goes, are you looking for a short, a feature, or can it be a series? Or are you open to any of those ideas? Oh, great. As a matter of fact, we just fine tune the language because we were learning on uh, every day. You know, you're doing, you know, we're doing these things. The same, yes. <laughs> it, yeah. Um, so we really do want, you know, scripted, narrative, episodic television. That's really what we want. We, we, we didn't want to rule I, 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 we, I was so reticent to rule out documentaries because we really are not documentary filmmakers. That's a whole yeah. different business. Um, but docu-series are just so fascinating now. And they're so, again, you want to talk about like peaks into worlds that we don't know. Docu-series are a great way to get there. We really are looking for episodic scripted television concepts. Um, so anything that makes a great dramatic series comedic series, whatever that might be. Yeah. That's uh, that's great. Um, and one more question. It's not really related to the search, um, but uh, Grant is asking, if one has a pilot for a series, can it be submitted directly to you at Gemstone or is it uh, through an agent? You know, we do, we do tend, to, as a studio, uh, listen, when we were in the Wild West and we were producing all over the world, um, you know, a lot of those sort of unrepresented submissions were coming through our networks. And so it was a little easier for us to access. Now we probably do want representation because it's just protects everybody. You know, it's probably the best way to go. That being said, if you have a pilot and you're, listen, this is the perfect rising storyteller search is the perfect program for you to bring that in. Okay. So you have a pilot. Let me tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if several of our submissions are already much further down the road than a simple six minute, you know, self tape. Uh, so a pilot is great. And you, if it's a pilot script or you've shot it already, um, there's no reason you can't go through the process here because representation on the agency or management side is not required for this search. So go for it. Excellent, excellent. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what mentorship will look like for the top four finalists, um, for especially for someone who has never done anything like this before? Oh, that's great. And that's exactly why we wanted to uh, establish a mentoring, um, uh, you know, what specifically, um, sorry, I saw a couple of questions come in. Um, in terms of what we were going to do in terms of pairing each finalist with a mentor, um, the mentors we chose, we chose uh, four amazing women uh, inside Sony. Um, these are all women who work in current, um, in comedy and drama, and they are in the weeds with writers and creators all the time. Um, and so what we're going to basically be doing is we're going to take the pitch we're going to work with Ideas United and we're going to help visualize this pitch. We're going to give um, up to $5,000 to each of the finalists so that they can go with the camera kit that you have and go out and do their best version of their pitch, whether that's, you know, something they go out and shoot, whether it's something, if it's, you know, I mean, we might have a playwright who wants to essentially perform a monologue that is just so riveting that when they shoot it themselves on a tripod, we might just be like, this is a show we have to tell. Um, but they'll basically be working on the very specific core competencies of a pitch. And then they'll also um, really kind of, and you know, what I think more than anything, create a dialogue with these, you know, emerging creators. So the creators feel like they have an ally. So it's like a mentorship. It's like, an allyship as well so that um, I'm not saying it's like the voice or the mask 
singer, but they do have like someone in their court who's really rooting for them when they go in to pitch to the judging panel. So that's really, yeah. That's, that's very cool. And mentorship has been such a big piece of alpha female and it, it totally works. And it's one of the most appreciated things that come out of that process for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, agree. So asking for a friend, are um, Sony employees eligible? <laughs> the rising storyteller search i'm so sorry we are sony employees uh, are not eligible um we have to do that they're yes. um, some of the great lawyer, best lawyers in the business work for us and uh, try as we might we can't we can't work around that for conflict of interest but right. i do say sony employees have more creative you know relationships out there, they are like the perfect gatekeepers for this because we keep saying to our Sony employees, like, please spread the word. There's nothing better than helping a friend get in the door. And you know, who's to say that friend gets in, they become a finalist, they win this thing. Who knows what happens to that idea? And you are also the person who got them in, so you've got stories to tell, and you have friends that can tell them. Go for it. That's, I'm that's sorry. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. There were a couple of people in the chat asking. Um, let's see. Another question here is what stories personally speak to you, Marie? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for stories that, I don't know, stories of underdogs, stories of growth, stories of, you know, of, of transformation. Yeah. I, I really, I, I, I've always just been so drawn to characters and stories that, you know, and I also really like slice of life stories. I, I, we do, we have a great uh, women's leadership initiative um, inside Sony and I had a, um, a meeting on Zoom during this COVID time, but with a group of really amazing women, we call them rock stars in uh, inside Sony pictures. And they're really phenomenal from all, all different departments. And one of the women, asked, you know, why isn't there just a story? And I love how she said just a story about, you know, an unremarkable but totally relatable Black woman in the, in the world today, raising children, dealing with all the same things that we all deal with. Um, I, she says she felt that, like, some Black characters were not being treated in a way that is just representative of her life. And she wanted that. And I've said, you know, that's so, that's exactly what the dramatic narrative is. It's like finding characters that are relatable to you that, you know, and so I'll use Friday Night Lights. I never freaking played football, but I know those trials and tribulations of like of marriage and raising kids and trying to make it work. That's what she wanted. She goes, I want that story. And I'm like, Oh, give it to you. We've got to find that story. Um, so I, I, you know, very drawn to stories that are personal that hit you. Um, you know, comedy. I worked in comedy a long time. Um, that sort of slice of life, tell it like it is, eviscerate the establishment sort of comedy. I love to. So you know, I can't get enough of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I absolutely, uh, you know, I, I, I think there's so much good work being done now, I would find what really matters to you, the storyteller, because, you know, don't try to emulate, like be authentic, be yourself, come in and pitch that because that's what we want. You know, that, that's a great answer. And I, I do want to address one of the questions in, in the chat from Jace. You know, we're ta talking about issues of representation and how we're trying to change uh, the industry with alpha female and rising storyteller search and um, it doesn't mean that we're eliminating anyone from the process. It just means that we're wanting to make the pie bigger. Um, the question is, are there any opportunities for males within Sony? And of course, the answer is um, yes, there are opportunities for everybody within Sony. Oh, God, of course, of course. I mean, we have it's we have a um, we have, I mean, there are men telling stories, you know, every on, on so many of our shows when I think of. Um, I guess for life is there's just a great example of a, of a show that's crushing it for us. A second season on ABC, true story of Isaac Wright Jr. You know, Hank Steinberg writes that show. He runs that show. He's a genius. Um, and then he has Sone Hoffman, who's one of our judges. I mean, I can't help myself. Uh, she <laughs> is just a fantastic executive producer, someone we're working with both of course on for life, but on other projects. Um, so 
there's so much partnership. I, I'm so glad that question was asked because um, I have two, I have two daughters and a son and my daughters go to an all girls school, um, which I, it was really important to my husband and I that, that they attend that school because it's just a great school and it's really all about like, you know, find your voice and go use it girl. Um, but my son goes to this big public high school down the street. And I said to them, the world goes round if we work together. And that is probably one of the best, uh, you know, aspects of this forum, this entertainment medium that we work in, is that it's really about collaboration, uh, whether that's, you know, gender or origin or, you know, oh my God, through every single possible representation, we are storytellers. So trust me when I say we are all about it. Whoever has a story, we want to hear it. And there's so many examples of great collaboration, male, female, up and down. Uh, our, our own slate and of course every studio slate yes uh, absolutely so I want to spend um, the the remaining time talking um, a little bit about the future Marie obviously mm -hmm. we're all we have these great teams putting on these efforts to to create equal opportunities and um, we we love the work that everyone is doing um, what can everyone else do how can we approach um, this industry in a way that it will allow all of us to make um, a change? Well, I mean, I think, the, you know, our common answer to that very much is there's so much more work to do. Um, you know, Sony, I have to say, this is why, you know, I've been at this company a long time. Um, I think Tony Vinciquera and our senior management team has done an incredible job of enacting programs that say we're listening and we're not just listening, we're doing, which I so appreciate because uh, neither works without the other. Um, so, you know, whether it's our action initiative that we have as a studio, as a company, um, you know, we're laser focused on increasing representation and that doesn't happen overnight. It means a concerted effort every single day saying, what slate? What do we have on that slate? What term deals do we have? Who's in the room? Do we Are we mentoring new, fresh voices? Are we pulling them up through the system? Does it become more representative? Um, and so we are doing that. We are, I'm on a content action committee right now um, that Karen Tolliver and Catherine Busby run. And it's just awesome. You know, we're being very specific. It's not, this is not something that is going to blow through the studio and it's become life as normal. There's no normal. The new normal is do better, work harder, you know, represent better. And so we're looking at our slates and we are legitimately, we are breaking down every auspice of every show. So whether you're the creator, the writer, the producer, the star, and then don't, let's not forget below the line. Below the line is fundamental. Like if I am a, a, a woman, a man of any background and I look behind the camera and there's nobody there that looks like me, then what the hell are we doing? It's so hard. So it's not, it's not representative. And so what I'm so proud of is that every single aspect of our business is being scrutinized. We are beholden to change it. We want to change it, and very specific questions um, are being asked of us, and uh, we're, we all are putting ourselves on notice. It's time. So it's a, actually a very exciting watershed time to be in the business, and I really think that a year from now, I hope to, you know, every day we should be making advances, but I think we'll be in a different place. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, and there's an, a question in the chat that I actually, I, I was just meaning to ask you and mm -hmm. talk about for a bit was, um, the question that Kara is asking is with the amazing technology available now, um, some people are shooting movies even on Xperia, for instance, uh, oh. not even talking about, you know, going alpha. Do you see the way content is source changing? And we had a, a bit of a conversation about this because um, you're, you're going to provide these filmmakers with these amazing uh, professional cool. buckets. And, mm -hmm. and all of that, and that, and that changes the industry. And we all know um, Glenn Gaynor at um, at Gemstone. Um, at Sony, yeah, he's Stream our Gem. Stream yeah. Gem. Sorry, I know. I don't want him to. Think, oh, I'd love Glenn Gaynor at Gemstone. I mean, if only. But no, he's <laughs> he's got bigger fish to fry. Yes, Glenn, Glenn Gaynor at Screen Gems um, has been such a huge proponent of the technology that we're bringing to the table and of using that and changing the industry with it because there are so many more things you can do now with this with this new technology, right? 
Yeah, you know, we sort of talk about like democratizing storytelling, democratizing content creation. I mean, even just, I mean, you're talking about the tools, but then how about the platforms? I mean, YouTube kind of changed everything. You know, I mean, I hate to say TikTok changes everything. I mean, you have something to say, you have a million places to say it. Um, and, you know, even high-end Vimeo, you know, just being able to convey your stories and have people see them and see your version of them is just, it's, it's exhilarating. Um, and this intersection, you know, of technology and entertainment, that is again, like what I just, I think Sony does. I mean, we're so uniquely positioned. I mean, we know this, right? I mean, it's nothing new, but every day there's just new advances and it's that coordination, that collaboration, that intersection that um, I think enables our stories better than anyone else. Um, and, you know, we like to say we are the last big standing independent studio. And with that, you know, we take this intersection of technology and entertainment and we take it to every conceivable buyer. Um, and, you know, I, I do I do feel like this is a like, while it's extremely challenging this time that we're in. I think that we uh, are going to emerge from this stronger and better because of it, because we've had time to really develop, really hone in with our creators, and we're going to come out stronger. And we, again, like you say, we have the tools and the platforms to, to, to execute. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're definitely very proud of being part of a, an entertainment mm -hmm. company that has such a huge technology backbone. It's very unique and nobody else has that, um, which is really great. Yeah. So um, the last question I have for you is, um, what do you hope for the film industry, and what will you personally strive to achieve, um, say, in you know, in the in the midterm? I mean, I you know, I think my personal hope is that I get to make another show that I'm just so incredibly proud of. You know, I think there's so much pride in what we do. Um, you know, I, I'm I, I just these five women even that I just. I hooked onto this panel. I am going to just say I was so blown away. And I, as I said on the panel at the time, I asked every single one of them, every single one of them said yes before they even knew what the ask was. They were like, I love this idea. I love pulling up storytellers, giving people opportunities. Um, what do you need? What do you need from me? So I feel like in the near term, it's really strengthening the community that we have of, you know, advocates um activists people who say i want to change i want to make this better um i'd be really really proud if if we can make something come out of this very first pilot program find one two three four storytellers that really blow our mind and more importantly that we can help usher through the system and that they can come here and i hate to say the system but i just mean the process of making television great television so you know listen it's raising the bar it's taking crazy risks. I feel like what if we don't take risks now? I mean, there's so much content. Let's just swing for it and really make content with people that we admire. Um, great. That's probably my my biggest aspiration. I I love it. Uh, I'm personally looking forward to all that content. It's going to be tremendous. This is definitely the golden era of storytelling and television, oh. as so many have said, and um, just the the quality of the story has been just so tremendous over the past couple of years that I can only imagine where it's going to go next. I know. And to be a part of that, to be a part of the industry now, I mean, it's just, it is, it's, it's incredible. And I, I am so grateful that I'm, you know, I, I get to be a part of this and, do it and might even bring in a, a new, a new voice would just be really exciting. And I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, really, thank you, Michaela. Thank you for, for, for just, I guess, believing in what we're trying to do here and for really advocating for your own community. And like every, you know, if we can, the more we all work together, the better we all are. So I think it's fantastic. Absolutely. We, we're just so thrilled to be partnering with you. We, we really wanted to, to partner with you also because you guys are the experts. You know what you're doing in, in the film arena and we wanted to put that support behind you to take the uh, idea to, you know, to completion. And we're so excited. And the whole alpha female community is behind the Rising Storyteller search. And uh, I know a lot of people will be sharing today. A lot of people were excited to hear about it. 
and uh, we will continue to to promote that and and watch the journey and contribute as much as we can because um, this is something that um, really fulfills all of our missions to to move this industry forward in really positive, exciting ways. Oh, that's great. And um, and please saying this to your all of your your community, please, please feel like just know that we are here with open arms to hear what you got to say. And we would love you to apply. Get into it. Let's do this. And let's let's discover the next, you know, great voice. That is that's such a great point. That's the other thing that we tell. Uh, this is exactly the the same message across the board that we have for Alpha Female and Rising Story Seller Search is you have nothing to lose by applying. Nothing to lose. Right. Only to gain. Even if you don't win, um, it has happened with Alpha Female in the past, and I know it will happen with Rising Storyteller Search. Even if you don't win, the time that you spend and the energy that you spend mm. thinking about what you want to achieve and thinking about your idea and refining it and making it stronger will have been valuable enough um, to take you to the next step. So nothing to lose, everything to gain. Um, yeah, sit down well. and do it. Well, that's right. And I was, you know, I had these notes from, um, fr I had these notes from our panel that we did with Bentonville Film Festival, who were partners, um, Gina Davis Institute. They are just like trailblazers in this space. And, you know, we've been partners with them, Alpha partners with them for a while now. Um, and we're so appreciative. But I loved what uh, Diane said. She said, you know, she had this movie, Yellow Rose, and she kept being told, well, it's too small. No one's going to watch this movie. It's too small. And she goes, too small in my mind means it's not generic enough. And like, no one wants generic storytelling right now. So don't worry if your idea doesn't feel big or in your words, like too is special enough or whatever. It's yours. And if you love it and you believe in it and you think there you've got something to say and we got to hear it, then please go for it. Please. I have nothing to lose. I love what you said, Michaela. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Marie, thank you so much for being here. You were wonderful and we're oh, so nice. happy to have you um, in this partnership and, and uh, so excited. And you'll be hearing from me a lot because I am, I'm a big fan and um, a big fan of the program as well. So let's see what else we can do together. I am so excited to talk more. I did really am. And thank you so much for having me. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.